Kind of a cloudy day here on the Pacific Ocean. Location for this infield, nothing fancy, fixed blade knife review. It is a dive knife, which will open up a very interesting POU discussion. Almost always I will do a tabletop review because of all the interruptions doing it in field. I'm not behind the house. I am in locations like this. Lots of distractions, wind, waves, perhaps other people, whales surfacing over there. <laughs> Although that would be pretty cool. I was gonna suit up and launch right here, do a tankless dive, snorkeling. I was gonna go right out here, come out to about that rock here, swim over here, and then do the knife review right there. But something changed my mind. Did you see what it was already? I panned and you've seen it, but you'd have, you would have to be super sharp eyed to see it. Here it comes again. Ready? See that guy sunning himself, the seal? Yeah, that's why I'm not doing it. This is great white territory. They are here actually in abundance. They usually don't bother people. We will talk about that in the POU discussion, by the way. But they're here and they're cruising. And here I am in a black wetsuit, <laughs> tooling along with that guy in the water. Now he's light colored. I don't know if I'm pointing right because my viewfinder is so dim. But I'm swimming along with that guy. No, that's stupid, man. I'm not gonna go in the water where there's seals. Especially alone, not gonna do it. So I decided to do this uh, cliff side, this knife review, not in the water. I've been diving it all week though, scuba and tankless. Uh, the water's a frigid 54 degrees today. I was diving basically a seven and nine mil full suit with a hoodie yesterday. And the knife that I'm gonna review right now came along. Hope you can hear me for the wind, it is what it is. Trying to zoom in on these guys again. There you go. That dude camouflage is pretty good, doesn't he? That seal. You don't even see him. Real nice visibility through here. It's probably about 30 feet once you get down there. Pretty good with, uh, I don't know, the swell coming in off the ocean. That's the ocean right there. Watch for the review. There's actually two. This is the first one. This is a Venger Squadron GMT. That is a dual time Greenwich Mean Time dive watch. It has passed all my tests with flying colors. It is awesome. Link in the bottom, buy it before I do the review. It was a cheap like $65 and it has a sapphire crystal. By the time I review it, it will probably be gone from Amazon or it will be three times as much. Happens all the time. Oh yeah, knife review. When do you need a dive knife? Well, you know, I don't know if I'm the end all expert and I'll roll in footage of me scuba diving, maybe free diving along the way, but I wear a dive knife all the time. When I'm in the ocean, any type of salt water, I will have a dive knife with me. Philosophy of use, what do I have a dive knife for? Primarily as a tool especially around kelp because as you can see in the water there's kelp everywhere out here now while i'm tankless on the surface I'll, you know i'll play around swimming over kelp but when i'm under the water especially alone i'm very cautious around kelp whether i have a tank or i'm tankless like free diving i don't want to get caught up in it get tangled especially if i don't have an air tank to breathe out of a knife can help I'm not going to say it would save you from everything, but it's a way to cut yourself free in that situation. Maybe you get entangled on the bottom in some fishing line, some type of rope, some type of fishing apparatus. Knife is helpful. Prying stuff, just lifting up webbing. I just used it yesterday for adjusting a weight belt I had, and it was a lifesaver. It saved me from having to go get another tool on a long walk back to the vehicle. Uh, it's super helpful just as a general tool. Digging, prying things open. You might be doing some type of harvesting of marine life like shellfish or something. You can pry them open with your, your knife. 
And then of course, and I'd probably stack this last, but it definitely, definitely in my book is a concern. And I kind of opened with this, is a weapon for defensive against sharks. Now I have no you know, fantasy about how that would work. I mean, if I'm out here and a shark decides to hit, he'll probably hit hard and without warning. And he's probably gonna be thinking you're a seal. So he's thinking you're that guy. So he's gonna do a test hit, try to damage you. And then they always back off and then they'll circle around and come back in for the kill. Kill Because a shark doesn't wanna get hurt. He just wants to main you or the seal and then he'll circle around and wait till you bleed out and then he goes in to feed. That's generally how sharks will attack, from my knowledge. Not the, I'm not a marine biologist, but I know a little bit about him. So will you see it coming? Probably not, especially if the visibility is not great. Um, but what if, what if, what if you do see him? I'd much rather have something than nothing. And so that brings us to the subject of our TUSA 940 Expert Titanium dive knife finally showing you the knife <laughs> philosophy of use discussion complete this is what she looks like right here oh by the way I did say two watches this is a momentum torpedo with a sapphire crystal also having passed all the dive tests perfectly of course about 145 for that one really classic awesome dive looks to it One reason I like dive watches so much is they remind me of the location I've been showing you. So it's kind of, for me, a memory thing. I just love diving. I love the ocean. I was raised in the ocean. That's just coming to light now in the project. I've kind of sat on it for a while. And so a good dive watch to me is uh, kind of a second cool thing. Um, for me, though, I don't, I don't like posing. I actually like doing, like you see out here. So I'm out here getting it done in the water. But it reminds me of those experiences I had. So anyways, there you go. I'll review this separately. It's gonna be a uh, five-star review. Momentum Torpedo is the name of that. This again is the Wegner Squadron GMT in white and phosphorescent numerals, which really glow. Nice ring on it too. Hey, this is a knife review, dude. Oh yeah. Knives and watches, they go hand in hand. This is a great knife, and actually I dove with a little Kershaw that I ordered, and it was a little bit smaller than this, and it's a 420 stainless steel dive knife, and it's okay, but it was a little bit too small. This one is not big at all, by the way. It's a four and a half inch cutting surface. It's about nine and three quarters overall length. I'm gonna put up my Endura in Hat 40 steel against it, so you can kind of see the size difference. <laughs> it's, it's like the same knife, right? So this is a small knife. Now the Endura is, I would consider a larger folding knife. But there you go. So the Tusa 940, and they have some others that I may throw the links in the bottom there too. Variations, maybe a blunt tip version for more tool applications. I, I love the size of this one. I wish they would make a larger one. I would like to have like a six inch blade, maybe even a seven. What? <laughs> I would. It's so light to begin with. I mean, it's titanium blade. This thing weighs like, I don't know, three ounces, the knife itself. Then you have the sheath with some rubber straps. We'll look at that in more detail here in a second. It's just excellent. I mean, you forget it's on your person. This could actually be a good tactical and an LBE knife as well. Now with that, what I would do is probably obviously take the rubber straps off and adapt it to the LBE. We'll see that it's got perfect retention, obviously perfect drainage, synthetic sheath that won't retain moisture. All the characteristics of a good dive knife. <coughs> Another characteristic is it will not rust. It is made out of titanium. Every stainless steel thing that I have brought out into the salt water has rusted, including uh, the spider codes in H1. Those will rust and have rusted on me. Titanium, not so much. And what type is this? I think it's 64, it's an uh, aluminum titanium. I'll put it on the screen what the blend is. 
Don't look to this for maximum edge holding. That's really not its purpose. It's rust resistance, adequate edge, the ability to cut and be durable, and more than anything, just last with minimal maintenance. That's the benefit of this knife. It's minimal maintenance. And when you have a bunch of gear, your BC, your mass, your fin, other equipment, you're always rinsing. It's easy to forget to rinse your dive knife. I've done that before. And so having a titanium dive knife is awesome. I absolutely love it. Like I said, I would like a larger version. Six inch, six and a half inch would be perfect with me. This is just a four and a half inch blade. Most divers though, that's perfect. That's all they want. They're not really looking at it as a sharp defensive tool. They're just looking at it as an overall cutting lines. What I was talking about at the beginning kind of a just underwater general purpose tool. Speaking of cutting lines, there's a line cutter right here. I have used it with light lines, it works great. There's your serrated cutting back, it works great as well. That's what you use against thick rope, maybe not so much your plain edge. And you can see the grind, by the way, on this. It's an interesting dive knife grind. It really reminds me of the Navy Mark dive knife. This does. So it's hollow ground about mid spine. It also is reminiscent of some of the SOG knives, don't you think? Some of the, fee, uh, I'm trying to think of that one. I would say probably the seal pup is what I'm thinking of. The larger seal pup. It looks very similar to that grind. Now I haven't hard cut with this yet. We're gonna test it on probably some polypropylene rope. And if I do that, I'll roll in the inset footage. If not, I won't. It just depends on how much time we have today. I love the bead blasted finish on it, on the Tusa 940. Good looking knife. I can't tell you how light this thing is, which isn't surprising. By the way, I do have some titanium folding dive knives. I didn't bring it out to the coast on this trip. I wish I had. Uh, I lost one in Hawaii on a dive trip. And I think I have another one. I think it's a no-name brand, but to be honest, we've been pretty happy with those, haven't we, Doodle? Super. <laughs> Doodle and Mrs. Nutton Fancy are off camera here. I got my Pacific salt here. You want that? Yeah, bring it down. You can also take the knife down, so there's a way you can get in the instructions for servicing, so get underneath it and wash out all the salt water. Here's a coated Pacific salt that Doodle just put in frame. That's kind of cool. I've shown him, like, size-wise, how similar it is. They're basically the same size. Pretty interesting. It's a small dive knife. Go to the website. Doodle has batches of these that he'll do. Not just Pacific salts. He'll do some Enduras. What others? Paras? Yeah, mostly Spotticos. Next round will probably be Cold Steel if there's something I want to... I have a couple things in mind for it. Let me show you Doodle real quick. Just so you don't think I put them in. I was surprised we happened upon you. They've been running. Yeah. We were They've just... been on the shore running. Him and this is nothing fancy, right? Yeah. We I'm were doing in, the knife review work. Past that point all the way back, so. Yeah, we thought you were still up there. No, nope. working. Always working. I want to do an infield for these guys, though. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Doing it right here. So, anyways, you take the handle down and service it. That is extra cool. I wouldn't say it's the only dive knife that does that, but it's a nice feature. The grip is rather small for me, but for what it's intended for, it's adequate. I would like the grip to be probably, if I were to be in charge of the design of this knife, full tang knife by the way, you can see it protruding out the bottom here. Probably about an inch longer in grip and probably an inch, maybe two inches longer in the blade once again. That's just me, bigger. One reason is is kelp, because in the kelp forest that I've been encountering on this trip, they're so dense, I would like a bigger blade just to saw through it. So this is kind of a short section of sawing, and it would be nice to have like a saw expanse like this. The knife will not float, nor is it neutrally buoyant. It will fall to the bottom if you let go, so be advised. I myself, as a scuba, di scuba diver, prefer that though. Because if it's positively buoyant, that's all the more weight I have to put on my system and carry into the water. So I want neutrally buoyant or maybe negatively buoyant for most things, not all things. Could you use this as a field knife? Absolutely. Top water all day long. Again, I think it's a perfect soldier knife. 
well not perfect but it's pretty good because it's so lightweight and it's so maintenance free titanium of course that's going to have its own sharpening things honestly I haven't sharpened but one titanium blade so I can't speak with a lot of experience about it <laughs> the edge out of the sheath with this Tusa is pretty rough actually it needs some work and I'm not sure how how tight you can make it nor do I know what grind it is I do like the shallowness of the grind that they put on it it's a pretty good grind so it's not real steep mostly though this isn't going to be doing a lot of serious uh, how should I say high definition cutting it's going to be probably doing pierce cutting and sawing and digging and prying that's mostly what I've used my dive, dive knife for in the past. I have had 420 stainless steel dive in the past and they've, like I said earlier, rusted out on me huge. Here's the sheath and it is pretty much perfect for a dive knife. Check that out. So it clips, retains, awesome. I've, I've used it quite a bit at this point with dive gloves and I've had no problems finding the button. Another thing that makes it a great soldier LBE knife is that it is designed to lock in really tight so you can run this thing upside down all day long and not worry about it and yet release it really quickly if you have to. That to me makes it ideal as an LBE knife. What I would probably do, not necessarily, is maybe paint this and again adapt it for LBE coverage, maybe with a 550 cord. I might adapt it to a, some type of molly carrier or maybe just a simple 550 tie into an ammo pocket. I'd have to experiment with it, but it'd be easy to do. I like the security of the rubber straps the Tusa comes with. And they're pretty excellent. I didn't think they would be actually. So the buckles have held fast underwater. They haven't released. They're secure and they're not so thick they add a lot of weight. Again, the whole package of this Tusa dive knife is uh, it's feather weight. You don't even know you have it. Just perfect, man. Would you use it as an in-field knife, nothing fancy, like in the woods? <sighs> Probably not, because since it is titanium, it has basically no weight at all. And if I ever have to chop, this is a horrible chopping knife. It's not designed for that. Again, no weight. You want some weight. You want some steel there to chop with. Even to do some light fire batoning with, you want weight for that. I don't think it'd be a great field knife. But as a emergency defensive tool, as a soldier, absolutely, and as a dive knife, I think it's ideal. About 80 bucks, and I think that's what I paid for this, this Tusa. 940, what do they call this? The Expert 2 Titanium. Now, I did talk about shark defense a little bit. I do believe in having, again, uh, tools, weapons for shark defense, but I don't look uh, to a knife as my primary defense and again I'll underline defense not offense I would never want to hurt a shark and I would do everything in my power not to only if it's between me and him would I ever decide to use lethal force against any marine animal especially a shark but a knife is kind of a plan B and this is when I go into open water where for sure there's sharks in the area I will dive at least with another person preferably in a group and then I will carry a bang stick with me. That's what this is. This is a 357 Magnum bang stick. And I got it from a place called, I think, Bill's Bang Stick, something like that. Stainless steel head, permanent, permanently mounted on a stainless steel shaft, which I have taped with red electrical tape for high visibility. And this is a short one. I think it's just 26 inches overall length. It would carry in my BCD in a sheath on a retractor or a float because this is heavy. You drop it and it goes to the bottom of the ocean. And I actually, if there's one thing I wish was neutrally buoyant, I wish it would be the bang stick if Bill can make it. That way if you drop it, it doesn't just go torpedoing down to the bottom. But real quick, the way it works is you'll put your 38 Special or 357 Magnum shell right here and you will waterproof the case with like, you'll waterproof the case with like fingernail polish around the primer, around the head. It'll go right into here. It's O-ring sealed. And then you will 
put your safety mechanism in like so, then know you're getting a bank stick review out of it. And this is kind of a critique on this, by the way. I think the cotter pin he's using could be improved. I would like to see a much better safety mechanism for it. And that's the way you swim around with it. So if you see trouble, safety comes out, and then assuming there's a 357 mag shell in there, you'll impact the shark with it. It will detonate the shell and go into the shark, and they are very effective. Ask the commercial fishermen that use these topside against all types of fish, huge fish, and that's primarily what they're used for, bank stick. And yes, they are legal, in case you're wondering. As long as it's permanently attached right here, I believe, which it is, this is factory. You can see the primer detonator right here. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because it's an interesting contrast to the knife. <clears throat> to me, that's a much more viable defense mechanism against a shark. Assuming, again, you can see it, right? It's easy to say you're going to see it when you don't see it. Plan B is the knife, though. Actually, plan A is what I'm doing right now. And that is applying common sense. <laughs> so, staying out of the water when there's seals in the area. I'll dive where there's no seals, thank you very much. Staying out of kelp beds so you don't have to cut yourself out of it. That is Tactical Doodle laying one down on the camera, nicely pulled. So common sense, apply it, live it. It'll keep you alive a lot better than any type of tool loadout that you'll do. True or false doodle. Yeah. Did you talk about the grip on that? Which grip? Yeah. Like this. Come over here. Because when I felt it in the water, I didn't like it. I, I don't mind it. What do you not like about it? I wish it had, because the rubber's cool, I just wish it had more texturing on it. Because when you're diving with it, all you really have are these like three little, what would you call this? I those? found the that traction on it fine though, but I'm wearing neoprene gloves. Uh, yeah, with yeah. gloves, I didn't find it was bad at all. And I like that it's a polymer, so it's not like rubber. I love how Tusa, I'm glad you brought that up because I forgot to mention it. I like how Tusa didn't put rubber on it because if I have rubber on it, then it's catching on everything. This is a, a medium traction polymer. I like that, but I wish they'd do a little more, you know, like that. Like a volcano grip? Yeah, th thing. throw okay. just a little bit of texture on there. Yeah, I could see that. Because I was so handing it to the water the same, going, sheesh. But improve the texturing on it. Okay, yeah. I'd be down with just it. Just a little more throughout, because I don't feel like it hurt anything, and the material wouldn't make it too grabby. I told them, I said, I'd rather have the handle longer. I mean, look, even the freaking Endura handle is yeah. longer. So on my likability scale, that's gotta be represented. I'm gonna deduct some points for a very short handle and what I perceive to be too short of a blade. Overall though, I like it. I think it's definitely worth the money. Uh, it's a knife I think that will last a long time. You know how much torsional rigidity strength does it have when you're really starting to pry? Can you break it? Probably, look. I mean, it's not super thick. It's probably meant for light to medium prying tasks. You can see the thickness right here. Love it though. Cool. Say goodbye to the Momentum Torpedo, the Bang Stick, the Tusa, <laughs> the Tusa Titanium 940, TD, the Pacific Ocean, and there's Mrs. Nothing Fancy right there. All hanging out cliffside as we review knives. Nothing Fancy Project, thanks for watching. See ya. Oceanside, dude. Oceanside. I wonder if our seal's still there. Yep, yeah, still there.